So it's upgrade day today. You guys might remember my homemade CNC. Today we're gonna to be taking it from this to this. So you guys are saying to yourself, well, Brad, what's going on? What's wrong with the CNC as you made it? You have the DIN rail and the V-groove bearings. Don't those work anymore? And of course they work just fine. But are they the best? No. Was this built on a budget? Of course. Now, I always wanted to use linear rails like this, but you know it was cost prohibitive. Now, the company Viver has sent me these 1800 millimeter rails. They are massive, sturdy as hell. Honestly, I thought I was getting the much smaller ones, but this is gonna be nice. Now, if I had been able to afford these at the time, I would have incorporated the design with these. At the time, these rails cost like $1,000. Now I think there's somewhere around the $300 range for these four rails. And yeah, so we're gonna modify this to upgrade to these rails. Hopefully we eliminate a lot of the racking issues that I have with the gantry. So we'll test that before and after and see how everything goes. Now you guys might know that originally I had these really flimsy free floating rails for the Z axis and I did make an upgrade video doing that and that made a world of difference. Now hopefully we get the same kind of results changing the X and Y axis over to these. With that being said, let's get on to our first step, which is gonna be measuring these rails and cutting them to their custom lengths. So for our Y axis rails, I've got them butted up to their existing location. I've got it dead ended over there and hanging over the edge here. I've marked where we're gonna to need to cut. I'll put this piece of tape right here. Just so when I'm using the angle grinder, I can see a lot easier. Now for the X axis, the rails are gonna be in the exact same spot right here. So I'll just measure the distance between there and we'll cut those rails to fit inside these uprights. So before we get our Y-axis rails mounted to the tabletop, I wanna show you what we're trying to eliminate here with these rail upgrade. I have the other side of the gantry clamped in place so it can't move. And I have a dial indicator set up on this side of the gantry and I'll show you how much deflection we can get with this style of rail. Hopefully our linear rails eliminates this. So I'm gonna push all the way to this side. That's what I'd call a reasonable amount of force. So we have that much twist, we're at the zero point. And now I'll push the other direction. And that's just under an inch and a quarter of travel. So you see there's quite a lot of movement here right now with the other side locked in place. So we'll test this after we get our rails installed and. Hopefully it's a lot better. So we've got our right Y-axis rail here. I'm gonna push it up against the DIN rail, which is sticking up right here. And one thing I noticed right away is the DIN rail is not uh, straight. It's got a high spot here. So there's a gap there and there, and it could wobble back and forth. So I guess uh, my CNC has never been straight all along because I checked all the rails and they all have the same issue. So the issue is with the CNC itself. So this is gonna correct it for us. Now we'll get this rail first of all attached down with eight million of these screws right here. I'm going to use a self-centering bit in each hole, start at the ends, anchor both ends, then fill in the rest of the holes. And then we'll move on to that side of the y-axis and we're going to place that rail not based on the other DIN rail because we know it's slightly off. We're going to place it measured off this to there and that end to that side. That'll make sure everything is totally parallel. And now we'll just move the gantry out of the way to get the last two screws. All right, that rail's secure. On to the next side. So I'll just start with it pressed up against the DIN rail, take my measurements and see where we're at. 56 and a half plus a sixteenth. 56 and a half plus a sixteenth plus a thirty second. So I've got these feeler gauges and that looks to be about a thirty second. Let me go put it over there and we'll remeasure. Okay, I've got a shim over there, so this is now parallel with the other side. I'm just gonna put a screw in both ends and then start drilling all the holes. So I've got my linear bearings right here, and what we have on the side and the top are little adjustment screws, and that's to take up any slop. I noticed one of these out of the box was a little bit sloppy. You could hear it clanging around. Just tighten those up to when they're just a little bit snug and it takes that all away. Now they glide perfectly. Now see here that 
The old V groove bearings on either side are kind of getting in the way because I want these to be placed right here where the old ones were. So what I'm going to do is add this one inch piece of Baltic birch plywood here. It's going to attach with the four M6 bolts into the top of the bearing and then get screwed onto the side. And I'll glue on a bunch of gusseting right here, like a triangular strip or whatever, to really strengthen up this joint. So I've got my eight bolt locations for these two linear bearings here. And what I did to get this was I laid it across the piece like this, pressed it up against the gantry right here. And then I simply just use my calipers here, to line up to the center of the bolt. I scored that location in that direction. Same thing for this side. And then I know this is 35 millimeters between here. So I just set my calipers to 35. And then using an upright piece, I just drew the square. Now that I have the crosshairs for all four of these, I just took my awl and pressed in a starting hole. So we'll use our brad point bit to drill these out. Simple as that. So we've got our holes drilled. Now we need to attach this to the gantry. And the way I'm gonna do that is by using these long pocket screws. And I'm gonna be using my pocket hole jig drill bit, but not on an angle through the side like this to about this point. So the screw can get all the way down in there and really engage in the upright pieces. Now, because I'm using that pocket hole jig screw, it has that step. So it'll carve a shoulder, a nice flat shoulder. And then we'll come back and drill the through hole all the way through. So you guys might have noticed that the old V-groove bearings right here are in my way. And because the bolt pushes out this way, they're going to end up being captive before we can get these into place. So I think my plan is to drill a hole in the side right here, take out the bottom V-groove bearing bolts, and then I'll get this piece mounted here. So that'll be rigidly mounted. That'll support on top of our blocks here after I remove these. And I'm gonna do that because I've loosened the belt here. So I'll be able to just lift up the gantry, slide out these bolts, and then it'll just rest back up on top of these. And then I'll bolt these down once I slide them into place. And that bolt's gone forever. forgot about these. God damn it. But I think I can just loosen the nuts from the other side. So let's give that a try. So that's cool. I was able to actually lift this up and bend this out far enough to slide these guys past there for now. So we'll get some glue on here and screw this guy on. I just took the lock nut off the bolts that is holding on these rollers for the belt down here because that was stopping me from lifting this up any higher. And I didn't remove all of this assembly. I just pushed the bolt out a little bit so now it'll clear. So now we'll take off these guys because we now have support from the bracket. So when we take off these V roller bearings, it'll land right on our new bearings. Roll. 
rolling. So before I go ahead and bolt all these down, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I've got the eight bolts on the other side started. Now I've got these ones, I'm pretty sure aligned. So I'll go ahead and put these in and uh, hopefully everything works. Well, that's pretty much it for the Y axis. I guess the last thing to do is touch this side and see if that side moves at the same time. Wow, there is so little racking. We'll go ahead and measure it, but it's pretty much instant. There is very little racking happening here. So with our new Y-axis rails, let's see how much we can make this thing move. One, two. So we've improved from an inch and a quarter of travel to just under a quarter inch, and I can see it. It seems like it's flexing up at the top. So. I don't think the linear rails are really to blame for any of this. Again, this is made out of wood and there's a little bit of flex up top I can see in the main beam of it. So yeah, on to the x-axis. So the x-axis is just going to be a pretty much direct replacement. We're going to take off the DIN rail, we're going to slap up the new rails and adjust things as needed. So the first step is going to be taking off the dust collection and all of our wiring, the router, the laser, all the motors, and separating the Z-axis whole unit from the gantry here. And we'll take the belt off too. Now I'm going to be installing this bottom rail first as I'm going to be putting these temporary supports here to rest it on and then to install the upper rail I'm going to use a block at the same thickness as a spacer and then it'll rest on that so that'll ensure these are completely parallel there's no guesswork. Four and a half inch spacer. Okay, hey, I've got my two spacers, four and a half inches. Make sure I have my bearings on here. So our four bearing blocks are gonna go approximately here. So I'll just mark them by measuring from the outside to the center of the hole, and then from the outside to the center of the hole, and then I'll score like this, and then I'll get my heights, uh, after the fact. So I unscrewed the Z-axis threaded rod and slid everything off. Now this is getting a little bit funky to figure out the heights because these are not square or the same length or anything. So here's what I've done. I have my square with the edge here. I figured out that I need to have the first screw at the bottom right down here. So I transferred the line up to here. Then I took this piece of metal here and I firmly held this in place as I transferred the square to this side. 
held the square in place, moved the piece of metal over here, and then brought the square over here so I could then make my line right there. Then I double checked everything just by eyeballing it, and those lines are pretty much dead on. Now from here, all I'm going to do is figure out where my line is, and then I can set my calipers here, and I can score my line across. And that's my first one. So now I'm going to take this, zero it out, and I'm going to add 35 millimeters, which is the distance between the screws. And there we go, I'll do the same thing here, here, and here, and then we'll center punch and go drill our quarter inch holes. So to measure the distance between this screw and this screw, I've gone ahead, put my square up here to make everything coplanar. We're gonna add 35. All right, let's drill some holes. Okay, now we'll slide the Z-axis back on. So I've got all the bolts in. The only ones sticking out the back are the bottom right, bottom left. We'll uh, just try to mount this sucker. That is spot on. Now I'm going to snug all these up. We'll move on. So because the distance has increased because of the width of these rails, remember the DIN rail was very thin, I need to add a spacer block here. So I've just whipped up this little block here. It's about an inch and a half thick. I've measured that's the extra width we need. And now I've just marked a spot right here where we need to drill a hole for this bolt or nut for a little bit of clearance. So over to the drill press. So I've got my spacer block with the hole in it, which goes around this nut. And I'm just going to first attach the old one to the new one. And now we'll attach the whole thing to the Z axis from this side. Well, I somehow hit the other screw. That's not good. Okay, that seems to work. Now it's as simple as just reattaching everything. I think I'll start with the uh, Z axis motor here. Limit switches are set up, time to reinstall the dust collection tube. The last thing to do before testing is to get the belt, thread it through the x-axis area right here, zigzag back and forth, tie it down over there, tighten the belts, and we're ready to test. Okay, I just turned on the computer. Let's see if she works. Now the Y axis. A little dust wipers work pretty good on those. And the Z axis. So yeah, I'd say it's working pretty good. All in all, I'd say this project was a great success. Thanks again to Viver for sending me these sweet new rails. If you want to get your own set, check the link in the description down below. I'll see you on the next one.